Now, European markets are falling sharply as investors digest news of mounting sanctions on Russia, a major oil exporter and the world's 11th largest economy. French and German shares are down by the most, with benchmarks there losing around 3%. Wall Street stocks are also set to open with steep losses when trading begins in the U.S. on Monday. It comes as the international crude benchmark Brent topped $100 a barrel. Around a tenth of the world's crude comes from Russia. The reliability of that supply is now in doubt due to the latest round of economic penalties. Meanwhile, China has come out against Western sanctions, calling them illegal. China is against using sanctions to resolve problems, even more so against unilateral sanctions without international mandate. Practice has long proven that sanctions will not only fail to solve problems, but will also create new problems, which will not only result in a situation of double or multiple economic losses, will also interfere with the process of political settlement. Now for more, let's go to Cornelia Meyer. She's an economist and independent oil industry analyst. She joins us from Bern in Switzerland. Welcome to the program, Cornelia. Now, the fear now among most governments is the prospect of Russian oil supplies drying up. Just how much of a shock would that be to the global economy? Well, it would be quite a shock, and I don't think it will totally um, dry up. But, you know, we, the, the markets are woefully undersupplied. You've seen oil prices very high already before this because of the tight market. And you saw that OPEC plus, you know, this, 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 this OPEC um, uh, organization of oil exporting countries and their 10 friendly nations um, were supposed to bring up every, every month um, 400,000 barrels a day and they can't do so because quite a few of them, especially in Africa, have um, have issues as, as does Russia. So if we take more oil out, um, we need to see where the crude can come from or uh, the sky's the limit for oil prices. So are there alternatives to this Russian supply or, as you mentioned there, OPEC just won't be able to meet this um, hole in demand if Russian supplies do uh, disappear from the market? Well, there is some spare capacity. I don't think Russian supplies will totally disappear. Let's not forget, 40% of Russian oil exports go to, to China already. So I don't think they will totally disappear. It's more about gas exports to Europe, where, where, where the real linchpin is. But, um, but, but you know, there could be, potentially, if the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deals are successful, there's 1.2 million barrels a day from Iran that could hit the market. However, let's not forget the JCPOA, these negotiations are the P5, the permanent five of the Security Council plus one, um, but, and, uh, which is Germany, but, but Russia is a permanent member, so, so there is a problem there. You could get more shale oil. Um, uh, we just have uh, amazingly not seen shale oil coming back to the extent U.S. shale production, to the extent we thought that these prices. So, yes, there are things that can be done to pluck the hole. But, you know, Russia is the second largest oil exporter in the world. So it's, it's, not, it's not a small thing if they export less. <coughs> Again, they will not export nothing, but they will export less. Cornelia, we know that Western governments are still considering more sanctions on Moscow. So what should governments be telling their consumers? Because inevitably, sanctions on Russia will have a direct impact on everyone else, right? Oh, absolutely. And look at, and especially as I said, gas in Europe is very important, and that goes into heating. So, you know, if the heating prices explode, that is a lot, that is very hard, especially for lower income people. And, you know, if this goes on for too long, we might see inflation rates in the US go well above 10%, and in, in some EU countries like Germany, well about 6%. So the question there is how strong is the resolve to, in, of, the, of the people? In, um, in, in, in these countries to do what they think is right in the face of it hot hitting their, their, their purses. All right, Cornelia Meyer joining us from Bern in Switzerland. Thank you.